Don't worry if you haven't been able to keep up with the hundreds of announcements that AWS made recently during reInvent 2021. It's okay, I have watched a ton of sessions on your behalf, read a ton of blog posts in order to prepare this easily digestible summary so you don't miss anything important. My name is Elias and I'm a senior cloud solutions architect. Now let's do this. If you're looking for analytics-related announcements, make sure to watch the first episode of the series. If you're looking for machine learning-related announcements, make sure to watch the second episode. But if you're here to know all the new database-related announcements, well, that's what we're covering in this one, so stick around. And we start with DevOps Guru for RDS. We're naming. This is a machine learning powered capability that automatically detects and diagnoses performance and operational issues within Amazon Aurora. Amazon wants you to think of DevOps Guru as a concierge that's keeping an eye on your database cluster and immediately notifies you when it detects a problem while providing remediation recommendations for a wide variety of database-related performance issues. Things like resource utilization, misbehavior of SQL queries, or problems with database indexes. Now, this is available for Amazon Aurora, uh, MySQL, and Postgres SQL compatible editions in different regions. So check out the video descriptions for links to more details. Another really interesting new announcement is Amazon RDS Custom for SQL Server. See, sometimes you want to access the underlying operating system of your database to configure um, settings, to install uh, drivers, and maybe enable native features to meet the dependent application's requirements. And this is where you'd want to use the managed database service for your custom and or packaged applications that require access to the underlying OS and um, the database environment. So Amazon RDS Custom is now available for the SQL Server database engine. And um, you know, for, for just those older legacy databases that you just can't replace with the standard Amazon RDS. And a great update for Amazon DynamoDB. There is a new DynamoDB standard in Frequent Access Table class. You might be familiar with this terminology from uh, working with uh, S3 bucket storage classes, you know, that help you reduce your cost. Well, Amazon claims the new DynamoDB standard in Frequent Access helps you reduce your DynamoDB costs by up to 60%. Now, this shouldn't be your choice for all use cases. I think it's mostly ideal for use cases that require long-term storage of data that is infrequently accessed, right? Things like application logs, um, uh, old social media posts, uh, e-commerce order history. So keep that in mind when designing your system. And the last database related announcement is about Amazon TimeStream, the managed serverless time series database. Amazon TimeStream has added um, three new capabilities, namely scheduled queries, multi-measure records, and magnetic storage writes. AWS says these new features enable customers to write, store, and access their time series data more economically and efficiently. With the scheduled queries features, you as a customer can define your queries, right? Along with the frequency at which they must be run. Then Amazon TimeStream periodically and automatically runs these scheduled queries and reliably writes the query results into a configurable destination table. Think of it as writing cron jobs for your frequent queries. Now, the second feature, the multi-measure records, is a new data modeling capability that enables customers to store multiple time series measures in a single table row, instead of storing one measure per row. This optimized data layout reduces the volume of data stored in a table, which helps customers lower their data storage spends, improve query performance, and minimize the cost of analytical queries, AWS claims. And the third and last new feature is the ability to write data into the magnetic store to further optimize data storage spend. And there is not much to say here. Uh, it's a feature that pretty much allows you to use a cheaper storage class to keep your long-term data storage. 
And that was it for AWS reInvent 2021 database related announcements. Where do we go from here? I covered database announcements in this episode, analytics in this one, machine learning in that one, but more episodes about compute, storage, and IoT are being prepared. So make sure to subscribe for those and hit that like button to show us your support. My name is Elias and see you in the next one. Peace out.